CRC is uh, the subsidiary body of the COP. It reviews information provided by parties on certain chemicals and uh, uh, according to the criteria in the convention and accordingly it makes recommendation to COP if those chemicals should be listed. The work of this committee ensures that there are constantly new hazardous chemicals and pesticides coming in front of the conference of the parties, giving the opportunity for countries to decide on future imports of these hazardous chemicals and pesticides. The role of FHA is very critical to the success of the meeting, to how members work with each other, to how members work with the observers, to how the members will work towards outputs that will be recommendations to the COP. Because all of that, to a larger extent, determines the success of the meeting and the effective uh, functioning of the Chemical Review Committee. Everybody, I encourage them to actively participate and I afford ample opportunity to everyone to be heard, whether you are an expert or member of the committee or whether you are an observer. The 31 members of the CRC are government designated experts in chemicals management. They are appointed by the Conference of the Parties to the Rotterdam Convention. In order to ensure equitable geographic balance, as well as a balance between developed and developing countries, each UN region has a certain number of experts to appoint. Each member has a term of four years, and there's a possibility for a second term for another four years. In order to ensure a good rotation of the membership and continuity of the work, half of the members are replaced every two years. Those who are not members of the committee can become observers. For example, parties to the convention, they are observers on this committee. The other observers are the more usual observers to our meetings, for example, UN agencies, non-governmental organizations, industry associations, etc. They are very active, actually, and in the recent years, uh, they, the number of observers is increasing. Uh, they, they participate not only in the meetings, in the, in the, in the sessions, uh, in the plenary meetings, but also in the pre-meetings uh, of the task groups, but also they, they provide uh, uh, information for the call of uh, information on trade, uh, information on uh, pesticides, severely hazardous pesticide formulations. The CRC is, is really the, the heart, the beating heart of the Rotterdam Convention. So it's really important that the CRC does its job well. It's really important that the CRC has access to all of the information that it needs. And it's really important that the CRC is transparent, open and subject to scrutiny to make sure that its decisions are trusted and believed in. Potentially, the outcome of the convention and the meetings that we're having here could have a direct impact on our, the use of our molecules. So therefore, we act as an observer here. We participate in the Chemical Review Committee, the CRC Committee, and the COP meetings, and provide scientific input or help in a constructive way where we can. So the Bureau uh, consists of the chair and her vice chairs, one from each of the uh, geographical regions. We pretty much make sure that the meeting goes according to the schedule and do a sort of preliminary review to look at the notifications um, and the supporting documentation. The international drafting groups basically do all the work between the sessions. So um, they collect and especially analyze um, the information that is available regarding the notifications on final regulatory actions and they prepare the analysis for whether that regulatory action or the notifications submitted actually meet the requirements of the convention. My role as a chair of the task groups is doing a first revision of the notifications, the specific substance 
and encourage to members and observers uh, give uh, the give the support uh, the contributions the concerns about the notification So far I have uh, only been a drafter of uh, the intersessional working group on considering the notifications of, of final regulatory action. So th those notifications are submitted by parties on a, on a standard form and the job of the drafter is to abstract and compile the information in a form that can be reviewed against the criteria of uh, Annex 2 to see whether the, the notification has met those requirements. Inputs from observers are extremely important um, because they have the, uh, they are the holders of uh, certain information, especially industrial chemicals or specific application of agricultural chemicals. PAN contributes to the intersessional work largely depending on which chemicals are going through the process and which, uh, how much experience we have of those chemicals. We try and share our knowledge of, um, uh, of impacts of those chemicals, any data that we might have about those chemicals and, and how they're affecting the environment or human health. Uh, we provide uh, comments to the documents they produce, for example, the task group reports or the draft decision uh, documents that are available. But we also provide input um, and comments to the work that's been done on by the intersessional working group. Uh, CSE reviews uh, notifications of final regulatory actions submitted by parties. CRC reviews uh, proposals for severely hazardous pesticide formulations submitted by parties and uh, if CRC decides to recommend the listing of a uh, chemical or formulation then the committee uh, also prepares a decision guidance document, the so-called DGD. The work of the CRC is triggered in two tracks. With regard to the ban of severely restricted chemicals, um, the, the work of the, the committee starts when the Secretariat forwards at least one notification of final regulatory action submitted by two prior informed consent regions. The second track is um, developing countries or countries with economies in transitions. Um, may propose listing of severely hazardous pesticide formulations in Annex 3 to the Convention. So once a committee recommends listing of uh, either chemicals or severely hazardous pesticide formulations, the committee starts preparing draft decision guidance documents. And this document will be eventually used by parties in making decisions related to import and export. Once adopted, then this draft decision guidance document will be forwarded to the conference of the parties. Then the conference of the parties will decide whether to make such chemical subject to prior informed consent procedure by listing it in Annex 3. So CRC aims at a consensus for its decision making. If all the possibilities for consensus has been um, exhausted and as a last resort, CRC can also take a decision by voting. Uh, Two-thirds of a majority of uh, uh, members present and voting. Every member on the CRC has to fill in a declaration form for conflict of interest where they have to lay out any interest that could potentially or probably influence their um, impartiality and neutrality for the work of the committee. So every year they have to restate any potential interests they might have and this is really important to ensure the integrity of the work of the committee. Because 
what the orientation workshop does is that it gives you um, the guidance procedures and the rules of procedure and the guidance, uh, policy guidance as to how to conduct um, the, the review of chemicals. And the orientation workshop, uh, that is where all the information on how to actually go about doing this is, is done. I think everything, every single meeting document, everything is online. It's posted on the website. Also, as soon as we do um, a task group report in reviewing the notifications, we post that on the internet site. All the guidance documents that we use to help us, they are posted on the internet site. And of course, then the discussions, uh, the CRC meeting is open to observers and, and also the contact group. So I think it's, uh, it's we definitely ensure the transparency. What is new is that the Secretariat is proactively informs uh, by email uh, all the parties, all, all the observers uh, on the, uh, even uh, three weeks in advance on the documents and um, they also organize the webinars in order to explain better the work uh, and the ongoing activities of the committee. One of the biggest challenges, and it's one that, that we're well aware of, is the actual availability of data. A lot of the countries that are nominating these chemicals, a lot of the countries that have the biggest problems with these chemicals, have the least capacity to collect data, collect information on the impacts of these chemicals, um, and the capacity to really pull together a, a reasoned case for delivering the, for nominating the chemicals to the Chemical Review Committee. If there are very little resources, it is really difficult for a developing country to do really a risk evaluation. FAO, for example, is helping developing countries with trainings, for example, on the pesticide registration toolkit, which gives a lot of information and, for example, strategies at hand to the regulators in developing countries in order to perform a risk evaluation. I, th I do see indeed a few challenges for the CRC. Uh, for example, uh, to increase the participation of all CRC members, even those that do not uh, you know, speak fluent in English or don't feel comfortable in speaking English, uh, we would see it uh, to be an advantage if there would be simultaneous English translations to uh, further engage the entire participation of all CRC members. There have been a number of chemicals considered by both the Chemical Review Committee of the Rotterdam Convention and the POPs Review Committee of the Stockholm Convention. So the two committees are uh, has the functionality and focus is, uh, are different, but there are also similarities. There are cases where same chemicals were reviewed, then it is very important to ensure the synergies um, when such case uh, that chemicals, the same chemicals are considered. Me and the Secretariat as coordinator uh, with other colleagues in, in the Secretariat. The work in, uh, involves embassies and consulates, FAO offices in the field, and the um, travel and travel agency. When the committee and the people uh, is already in the building, uh, security, catering, IT services, so, so many groups involved in this process to make this happen.